Today, I'm going to be speaking with uh, Belinda Labatt, who is now the CEO of Lomico Metals, a graphite uh, company in based in Quebec. And uh, good morning uh, to you, Belinda. How are you? Good morning, Jack. How are you? I'm fine. And, and I want to tell you that I have quite a bit of experience in graphite. So uh, I don't Let's get into talking about, about your project, because right now, Canada is, in my opinion, moving far ahead of the rest of the world in coming to grips with what has to be done in order to make uh, altered energy uh, production and storage devices, including electric vehicles. And so uh, the province of Ontario has, has already gone ahead and said, we're going to support at all levels supply chains for critical materials for alternate energy and, and EVs. And I believe that uh, Quebec, even before this, has, has already been operating on such a policy. And I'd like to know what your plan is to go into the graphite business. And in particular, I'm very interested in spheronized graphite. The, the form actually used in the in the anodes of batteries, and which is uh, the, actually the most complex part of the processing of graphite for altered energy. It is, and you know this is an industry that you need to build. Uh, people will will talk about their expertise, but the reality is, a hundred percent of the processing occurs in China. Uh, mm -hmm. About 90% of the material comes from China, and that is starting to become a more fragile supply chain. And so when we look at what we need to do in Canada, we have an opportunity for entrepreneurs like myself. This goes back to Tracy. Like, why do this? It's because I'm an entrepreneur and I want to do something. I don't want to read about it. I, want, I don't want people to tell me that um, we, you know, we might become a leader. I want to lead. And so what we uh, need to do is we need to look at every, every aspect of this graphite business, because what happens when you have spherical graphite is you still have a lot of fines that are left over. You have the other, the super flake or the fines that are left over that you need to have a market for that because the spherical graphite takes up almost you know 40% of your entire tonnage. So if you're producing 100,000 tons per year of graphite natural, the spherical graphite component is 40,000 approximately. It's the same numbers that Nouveau Monde has established. So you need to have a market for both. And in fact, the other market, which is refining, lubricating, even for pencils, it's, it has a variety of uses, but we need to establish that market. Because it, you know, right now there's a single producing graphite player in North America. And they are 150 kilometers away from us. I am very excited about that opportunity. I'm very excited to learn from Northern Graphite and, and how that evolves. Uh, but you could see where we have a fantastic opportunity to create Brand Canada starting in Quebec for graphite. Could you produce enough graphite to satisfy the North American market? Huh. We, not with, we've looked at this. So we've looked at, for example, in Quebec, uh, we've looked at the battery manufacturers, the one that's really exciting to you, which is the Stromvolts, the, the Volt, all of those um, uh, battery manufacturers that are going to, that need the anode material. That will be about 75 gigawatt of capacity. We need 150 gigawatt capacity to supply those 1 million vehicles that Quebec has said they want to have on the road in, by 2030, which is even ahead of the Canadian goal, right? So what that means is that we don't even have the ability to feed the amount of batteries into the market that is being required. What we do know is there is a very rich place for us in Quebec to service just the Quebec market, let alone the North American market. Can but, you be competitive with the Chinese even without, let's say, government subsidies? I understand government support while you're developing your company, but do you, will you need subsidies to compete? 
I don't believe that subsidies is the way to go. But I will say this is that there is, you know, we used to have the, the World Trade Organization, the free trade agreement, all of that was about buying your good where it is least expensive. That's what that's what trade was about. Right. We have now a pre COP26 world and a post COP26 world. COP26 changed everything because of carbon taxes. So to answer your question directly, are we going to compete? The, the consumer, the next generation, the investor is telling the world that ESG matters. There is a cost to carbon and it's going to be a, a heavy financial one. And therefore, the movement of that fully formed battery from China into the automobile facility, manufacturing facility in Ontario, in Windsor or in, in um you know, in the United States is no longer going to be financially uh, feasible. So that has changed. But the other part that we need to understand is we are creating an industry. So what we don't need is necessarily subsidies. What we need is government support there at the table when we say we need dedicated roadways or we need to look at an infrastructure development that works with the mine and with First Nations own infrastructure works. We need to know who those players are. And that's my role. That's where, where a full-time CEO can have those conversations because we're thinking strategically. To Tracy's point earlier, I'm having conversations with the Canadian Infrastructure Bank. I know what they will finance. I know how much. I know how to work with them. So, And I also know what the government of Quebec is looking for, what Investissement Quebec um, needs in order to invest in us. So we need to have these conversations early. We need to be very involved because the subsidies, um, what, what we have in Quebec, for example, are grants. So that helps. For example, we just got um, certified with EcoLogo that we are a you know, ethical, transparent company and the government will reimburse us some of those costs to get certified now that we have that. So those types of grants or working with students are extremely valuable and everybody wins. A very interesting development in Quebec uh, that seems to uh, escape the notice of, of most uh, investors is that the Korean company POSCO, as POSCO Chemicals, has just uh, uh, agreed to put $400 million into a plant in Quebec to make the chemicals uh, used to make uh, lithium ion batteries. Now, that tells me that uh, the revolution in Quebec is really underway. Have you had any conversations with POSCO? Or, uh, you, I understand it might be, uh, uh, you know, proprietary. The, well, the question is, you know, how um, are we working with other commercial right. entities and who are building the supply chain? And we, you know, we're still here this just four or five months now as, as a management team. And that is certainly a priority for this year. And to your point, one of the things that those conversations would require is the technical footprint of our graphite. And that's what the metallurgical testing program is all about with Colem in, in Quebec and Pro Graphite. It is to take a sample and to tell you exactly uh, the flake size, the distribution, and look at the spherical capacity or the spheroidization of the, the graphite. So we certainly will have those conversations. Um, we have, you know, five years ahead with a permitting process from the PEA. So we see that as these entities come in and as we develop the, the view of what we can do in the southern part of Quebec with graphite, we will be in a very good position to have those conversations. So yes, we will, we will be having them. Well, th thank you very much. And I, I have to tell you, I'm very impressed by that answer because it's exactly correct. You <laughs> cannot deal with Korean companies without coming in with the technical data uh, uh, with you ahead of time. They don't want to hear about what's going to happen. So thank you very much. And uh, I think, uh, you're on the cusp of, of a major development in, in uh, graphite and in Canada. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Jack. Pleasure to be here.